recording has started you can commence the session now okay fine uh, uh, professor sante shall we uh, start with the proceedings now sure 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 okay sir okay uh, good morning all uh, myself uh, jasbir singh uh, department of computer science and iit ju uh it gives me immense pleasure to introduce uh, professor uh, santi p maithi uh, resource person for this morning session uh, professor santi p maithi is the head of uh, school of vlsi at uh, indian institute of engineering science and technology shippur professor santi p maithi has received his phd in engineering from uh, bengal engineering and science university shippur he received uh, post doctoral positions in several institutes like uh, university of vigo spain Nanyang Technology uh, Technological University Singapore and University Paris uh, France his research interests include uh, CDMA cognitive uh, radio network compressed sensing image reconstruction and transmission digital image watermarking and secret sharing his recent research work focuses on uh, machine learning in uh, image reconstruction and uh, CRN he has published about 300 research articles in several journals conference proceedings and uh, book chapters he has uh, guided so far 19 phd students and uh, few are uh, currently working under his guidance uh, today he will be uh, discussing about the cognitive uh, radio networks uh, thank you sir thank you sir for joining us uh, it's over to you sir now uh, good morning to all am i audible properly yes sir so the volume is a little low sir i don't know why uh, okay uh, good morning to all uh, so it's in the uh, uh, first of all i like to thanks professor singh for uh, kind introduction and also thanks to organizer particularly the department of computer science and it of jammu university and uh, professor sen sharma for uh, inviting me to deliver this talk thank you, thank you sir thank you sir we are obliged sir it's indeed my pleasure so with the uh, i let me share the slide first uh, is it uh, can you see the slide yes sir it's visible sir okay so uh, today's my talk will be on cognitive radio in iot and uh, energy efficient system design energy efficient networks so before i come to the uh, topic let us see Uh, the content what i am going to present to you uh, regarding this uh, uh, first of all i will just uh, by this time i think this is the second day so you have the general introduction of iot uh, which is, uh, what are the components in iot you might be uh, by this time have an introduction but still i will for the sake of my discussion i will just make a brief introduction and challenges in iot then i will introduce the cognitive radio concept and how this cognitive radio concept uh, finds its suitability in the framework of iot in future so cr iot why cr in iot and why cr is a potential candidate for uh, enabling iot technology then what are the design factors if cr is used for iot then what would be the design factors so that will i discuss then i will talk about two issues which is energy and security i know that uh, i was going through the different uh, lectures scheduled and there were security aspect by means of blockchain and others but i'm not going to that perspective but in the framework of cr iot system design i'll talk about an issue of eavesdropping and jamming and i will be talking in the framework of physical layer security then i will briefly talk about two system design where energy efficient system design is the primary issue for by means of d2d communication in cr iot energy harvesting based approaches and then second one is something like a typical application of unmanned aerial vehicles cr industrial iot system designs so let us start with uh, iot in brief what is an iot there are different definition in the existing literatures and among the community uh, but in brief everywhere it is same more or less the things are common like it's nothing but an uh, connection of objects uh, through internet using different communication technology so in one sentence if, if you like to define 
what is iot so iot is nothing but interconnection of different objects through internet using different communication technologies <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Sorry, sorry, sir, for interrupting. Uh, sir, yes. the volume is actually very low, sir. Uh, is it some some issue with the mic, sir? Uh, so, I think I have make I have make the full connection. I don't know. Uh, uh, sir, maybe the mic is not closer to you. No, no. I I keep it uh, closer to my mouth. Uh, that's I I don't know. Is it? Uh, I don't have any other right at this point. Uh, just a minute, let me check. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, sir. Not say uh, it's not. Uh, I mean the same, no? Yes, yeah, sir. It's same, sir. Hello. Hello, uh, sir. If you can uh, speak a bit uh, louder, uh, I mean, may that uh, maybe that be help, that will be helping. Uh, sir, you are muted, I suppose. Hello, hello. Can you listen to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now it's fine, sir. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, actually, okay, I... no issues, sir. No issues. It's okay. Okay, I changed the microphone. Right. Okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, let me uh, come to the point. So, um, uh, is this uh, audible now? Yes, sir, it's good now. Okay. Uh, so, uh, just uh, what is uh, IoT? IoT is the uh, uh, connections of objects that I say this uh, through internet and using different communication technologies. These objects may be device, maybe buildings, maybe uh, vehicles, or other things, and they should be equipped with 
uh, different types of uh, electronics, uh, software, sensor, or uh, uh, I mean connectivity. So this is the essential requirement. And there are certain uh, points about the uh, these objects. The points are they may be static or mobile. Uh, this is one point, or they may be uh, uh, working with energy constraints or uh, having the I mean the limited energy or may have the sufficient energy. They may be connected with the physical world or not. So the objects, so-called objects in IoT is nothing but a kind of device or it may be vehicles or it may be buildings or other items which are equipped with software, electronic sensor and must be the communication module or there must be the connectivity. The primary objective is to collect data and exchange this data. And there are other way also people define this. I mean, Cisco defined this IoT, which is nothing but the intelligent connectivity of physical devices and uh, uh, aiming towards the objectives that may see gain in efficiency or in business growth and quality of life. So uh, we can think of in a bigger way in the framework of the communication perspective, if we like to define. So IoT or Internet of Things is intelligent connectivity of numerous heterogeneous devices. The main objective of the IoT is to connect numerous heterogeneous devices to uh, systems to offer smart services using minimum resources. And that resources may be hardware, the resources may be uh, the power, maybe the complexity, or maybe the cost and expenses. So in one sense, uh, we can define that it's an intelligent connection of objects, which is having unique identification. So uniquely, I mean, addressable. And based on certain communication protocols, the, the connect people and things anytime in any place with anyone, any things, and to offer any service by means of using any path or networks. So I saw this diagram in order to have a kind of operation that some objects are involved with, it first and foremost things to sense the uh, environment to collect data, to gather data. So there would be a module of sensing and acquisition. I mean, uh, data acquisition or sensing parts would be there. Of course, the objects would have unique identification or ad address. And uh, the next thing is that this data or which it will collect, there should be some computing approaches. So uh, computation to be there. And there, this needs to provide certain services. So this service uh, oriented job or application to be there and huge amount of data because cognition we will later on see. And basically the objective of IoT has some sort of cognition ability in terms of learn, think, and decision making. So its objects should have some form of cognition ability in the framework of learning, in the framework of uh, decision making, think and decision making. Of course, we can add other features also like intelligent decision making, not only decision making, intelligent decision making or uh, perception action cycle or on-demand services or massive data analytics or knowledge discovery. So that feature should also be there. So, so the last module that likes to say that unless this data, which are collected huge volume of data, because we'll see later that there will be communication module, that device to be connected with cloud or objects to be connected with cloud. And there should be huge volume of data and that data should remain meaningless unless it is properly analyzed and interpreted. So there should be semantic analysis of data. So, a, so an IoT module should comprise of sensing and computing services and semantics and all these to be meaningful provided there is guaranteed connectivity. So there would be communication. In existing modes, there are different types of connectivity and there are different types of communication technologies are used like RFID, uh, Zigbee, Bluetooth, uh, near field communications, uh, Wi-Fi, LT-like models. But we will see 
that there is a crunch of spectrum scarcity and that spectrum scarcity is an important issue because billions of nodes to be connected worldwide and they need interaction provided there is a guaranteed connectivity and that guaranteed connectivity essentially demands the allocation of the spectrum spectrum or bandwidth or channel allocations and that's why the communication envisaged by means of a technology which is that cognitive radio networks means not only iot objects should have this cognition capability of intelligent thinking and decision making at the same time for connectivity it has to have some kind of intelligence to sense the radio environment to understand what are the spectrum what are the network channel conditions and by means of that it adaptively transmit change its data transmission so that it enables a quality of service data transmission in the long run i mean in its effectiveness so if we just summarize this different module then we will see that iot objects are involved with the jobs sensing and acquisitions then there should be uh, data uh, aggregation analysis and decision making there would be energy efficient data transmission and there should be of issue of security there should be issue of security and so if we think of that iot objects requirements sensing and acquisition aggregation analysis and decision energy efficient transmission and protection from security threats i have already told that what is expected to have in an iot objects that it is having some cognition ability to learn think and decision making and uh, so in order to do this it has to have certain kind of job to connect analyze and integrates and the connectivity is an important issues so uh, what i uh, like to say uh, if i move to communication module of the iot network focus on the connectivity issue of the iot then i can define one way that the beginning as i say that iot is nothing but connection of objects through internet using different communication technology and as a matter of fact different communication techniques or technologies are there to support this iot networks wired and wireless networks and obviously wireless networks are preferred because of its flexibility flexibility in the sense of coverage area but when we consider the uh, wireless transmissions uh, okay before coming to this let us uh, uh, let, let us have that what is the uh, because iot would be more or less application specific jobs so over and above what the needs or benefits of this iot now the benefits are expanding interdependence among the human beings in order to interact collaborate and contribute to the things what the benefits we can expect by means of this human interdependence expanding by means of integration by means of contribution and collaboration we can efficiently utilize the human resources so in any uh, kind of job that human experts of the relevant fields are integrating or interacting and collaborating obviously we can expect the best resource utilization we have the minimization of the human effort we will have the uh, uh, i mean uh, time savings and we can add intelligence to the iot objects the essential things as i say the security aspects although the iot objects because of its cognition there are challenges of security it poses security challenge and if we think of cognitive radio iot the cognition ability of the iot objects again add or pose security but over and above there are scopes that cr iot or iot systems offer security so improve security so these are the benefits of the iot now uh, as i define this that communication perspective the definition so wireless communication is the very important or preferable one because of its flexibility but when we look for wireless communication uh, for connectivity in iot objects there are issues the issues is the data rate and the bandwidth supports range and data bandwidth supports becomes an issue because spectrum is a costly and scarce resource we can thought of spectrum as a natural resource why now like your ear as it gets pollution spectrum can also be polluted if there are traffic congestions in a special location if your spectrums are crowded with several uh, traffic then obviously the spectrums get polluted so spectrum is a costly and scarce resource and possibly a natural resource 
and it needs protection. It provides uh, kind of, uh, I mean, uh, it needs protection uh, from its pollution effects. And if we adopt cognitive radio networks, I will take, uh, introduce immediately after this, the, what is cognitive radio. So when we uh, make use of the cognitive radio concept for this addressing the spectrum problem, then it offers a green communication. Not only it takes care of the environmental issues of the spectrum, but also energy efficient cognitive radio take care of the aspects of carbon emission. Because you know the power is an important issue in data transmissions and power allocation, the uh, cellular communication and base station towers, they emitting continuous tons of carbon dioxide. And if we go for a green cognitive radio communication for IoT system design, like today's green communication and uh, competition, there will be a day when IoT technology will be matured. People will be definitely looking for green IoT frameworks. So uh, it addresses the issues of the environment. Now, when we look for the spectrum or radio environment, there are certain issues. When an IoT objects like to connect with its peer IoT objects, it has to find the pitch or uh, available channels. And in order to access the spectrum or in order to have spectrum allocation or sharing, we have to have certain uh, operation in connection with spectrum. That is spectral sensing means we have to sense or an IoT objects has to sense before establishing connection with its PR IoT nodes, whether a particular channel or a particular radio frequency spectrum is P or not. So it has to sense the spectrum radio environment. Then it has to make some decision whether the spectrum is currently being utilized by licensed user or it is being already assigned to some applications. For example, if we see our data transmission, television transmission, amplitude modulation radio, FM radio, police radar, there are different applications. And for that applications, different spectrums are allocated or assigned by regulatory bodies of the country. In every country, the spectrum allocation or spectrum policy, there are tax force who allocates the spectrum such unlicensed spectrum or licensed spectrum. So lower all frequency over the uh, 10 gigahertz for different applications. I didn't include this in the slides that different or varieties of applications, governments have allocated this spectrum. So the spectrums are already uh, allocated. Of course, uh, they are in inefficient utilization because the spectrums are allocated in static mode. Say, for example, television transmission and a particular frequency is allocated for tele TV transmissions. But if we see our country, the northern part of the country or northeast part of the country, there are that many number of television channels or stations are not there. So spectrums are underutilized and that frequency or spectrum can be opportunistically utilized for IoT application specific jobs. So spectral sensing, spectral decision and spectral management means out of the free spectrum, what IoT application will use which frequency based on the applications, whether we need a narrowband applications or whether we need wideband spectrum for this application. So spectral management and when its involvement, because in IoT, the objects in future expect to have the mobility. The objects will not remain static. Objects will move from one place to another for seamless connectivity. Only one single frequency, one channel frequency, which seems to be available, you cannot make use because the when the objects move from one place to another in that new locations, the channel may not be available free. So you may have to allocate new frequency because wireless channels has limitation in terms of coverage range in terms of data rate. So we have to go for switching spectrum from one channel, I mean, one frequency to another frequency, the spectrum mobility. So these are the all spectrum related issues that an IoT object has to deal with or has to accomplish. Spectral sensing, it has to sense whether at a particular radio channel is free or not. It has to make a decision. Then we have to allocate the spectrum for different IoT applications. And when there is a question of mobility from one place to another, the spectrum mobility becomes an other issues. So next question comes, what is your expectation from Internet of Things? IoT is expected to offer advanced connectivity of devices. Hello? 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 Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir, yes, you are sir. audible. Okay. Yes, okay. sir. 
So yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so expectation from IoT. What we can expect that it is essentially connections of devices, systems, and services, and that offers beyond machine to machines by means of varieties of protocol domains and applications. So it is expected that that everywhere within the objects there should be some form of automation, and that would be uh, that would benefits in all fields of our life. So uh, in a smart city where there are uh, self-regulatory motor or public transportation systems, we can expect that if these facilities are available, that uh, provides the uh, benefits in terms of the travel plan time. That means we are looking for an intelligent transport system. In an intelligent transport system, it is expected that roadside vehicles to be connected, they will offer, um, uh, provide the traffic conditions, they will provide the electron uh, electronic tolling. So, these devices need an exchange data among themselves. And as a matter of fact, connectivity becomes an important issue. This we can expect in the framework of smart city. Or it can be expected that these IoT objects are connected with sensor and microcontrollers and communication modules. So it will be uh, available everywhere in every places or in every devices or every things. So it is expected that a people after the day long service or works on the way of return home uh, expects that uh, after reaching there, there will be air condition working so that the comfort can be obtained. So it may be possible that remotely one can, uh, I, I mean, uh, run its air condition. And so some kind of automation in home appliances should be there in terms of, uh, I mean, uh, smart fridge or smart bulb and all that that's are already in the operations but there are challenges there are problems associated with these technologies and why cognitive radio comes in the form of a situation so i like to say my whole objective this communications flavor of iot needs introductions or involvement of the cognitive radio framework because this internet oriented semantic oriented and in uh, things oriented version of the iot is absolutely meaningless unless there is a guaranteed network connectivity and there is the scope of cognitive radio there is the scope of cognitive so iot objects itself has cognition ability and that cognition ability will add one more features involvement of the cognition of radio environment the spectrum information maybe by means of sensing by means of prediction it should have certain because there is uh, simultaneous presence of licensed user and unlicensed IoT objects users and their presence, their signaling to be detected. So that's the concept cognitive radio. Cognitive radio like to means what? Now in a radio environment, there is a licensed user. There is a particular user. Government has allocated for particular service a spectrum. But somehow it is found that that it is because, because uh, why I'm calling somehow the concept of CR comes by Joseph Mitola, who introduced this concept in 1999. Uh, the, the concept is that the static mode of allocation everywhere in every country, uh, the spectrum allocation is static mode of allocation for different services, different range of spectrums are allocated. But when it is observed, when the regulatory body take the statistics, it is found that the most of the part, I mean, most of the part of the allotted spectrum often underutilized. 85% spectrum remains underutilized because of the static allocation of spectrum. So we understand that there are huge 5G, there are demands. So high data rate transmission, there will be large volume of data rate transmission and needs bandwidth or spectrum. That's why we are looking for millimeter wave communication and all this. So spectrum scarcity is experienced in one hand. In other hand, because of the static allocation of the spectrum, spectrums are found to be underutilized. So understand the radio environment current situation. Everywhere the government policy is static mode of spectrum allocation. So that creates a scarcity for newer service or newer application or for high volume of data rate transmission. And at the same time, you can see that when you allocate it, for example, as I say, television bandwidth, the television bandwidth in different parts of the country when statistics are taken, it is found that the television channels bandwidth are inefficiently utilized. I mean, there are white spectrum, the spectrums remain underutilized. Then why don't we go for a kind of opportunistic transmissions? So that's your cognitive radio means the 
IoT objects or a secondary user or an unlicensed user, while it needs transmission of data, it will sense the radio environment. The radio environment, the spectrum is allocated to some other services in terms of primary user or in the name of licensed user. Means a particular spectrum in one geographic location is assigned to particular service. We call them particular user or primary user or licensed user. But it is also a seen that that these spectrums are underutilized means not always primary or license user tends transmitting data so the question now comes can this spectrum be uh, opportunistically used i mean can a secondary user here our iot objects before it gets connection with its pr will sense the radio environment and find which part of the spectrum are free or available and based on the available spectrum it will control its transmission characteristics transmission means modulation or data rate control so that adaptive adaptivity so cognition of the radio environment and based on the resource available right at this time the reconfigurability so cognitive radio is a term as i say it is an intelligent communication approach where a secondary or a licensed user in our analysis iot objects who like to connect its pr iot objects uh, by share mode of operations and before it data transmission it first sends the radio environment that see whether the uh, primary user or licensed user is sharing the band or not and then based on the available spectrum information or spectrum availability it changes its transmission and reception parameters for making the communication maximum possible so two things are very important in cognitive radio one is the cognitive capability means understanding radio environment and reconfigurability means based on the available information of the spectrum it has to make adaptive its transmission and reception characteristics so there are different cycles as i started in somewhere the spectrum related issues what is cognitive radio now that can adapt its transmission parameter based on interaction with the radio environment and cognition cycle is what the radio environment first it will i mean an iot object receiver iot object should have a communication module and it has a receiver module it will receive the signal or sense the spectrum whether if there is a licensed user and if licensed user communicate it will sense its signal and it will make a hypothesis decision binary hypothesis whether primary user right at the time is transmitting or not so it makes a spectrum decision if it founds that spectrum is not currently being used by licensed user it will use this as a spectral hole and then it share the spectrum there are different mode of spectrum sharing i will come to this in the next slide the whole i mean if it founds that that some spectrum currently not being used by primary user it will transmit opportunistically so the moment primary user start transmission it will stop its transmissions so this is called interweave this is mode of interweave means a iot an iot object sends the spectrum it finds spectrum hole then it will transmit data and the moment primary user start transmission or li license user starts uh, starts transmission the iot objects stop its transmission this mode is called interweave or a primary secondary has or iot objects sharing spectrum with other network they have a uh, understanding that means in a time sharing mode they will operate that means iot objects has complete information of the primary user transmission pattern and in return iot objects will cooperate in primary user transmission so a particular so they operate in the frame basis time frame basis a part of this uh, time the primary user transmit and in the second part secondary user or the iot object transmit and a fraction of its time it will cooperate in the primary user transmission so that's college overlay mode of communication so in overlay mode secondary or iot objects helps in primary communications there are many requirements i will talk about these issues 
that where IoT objects, apart from its own application, has to support some other existing communication systems. And it's called overlay mode of communications. There is another mode of communication that's called underlay mode of communication. In underlay mode of communication, what is happening? Primary and IoT objects, they simultaneously data transmit over the same bandwidth or over the same radio frequency channel. What they will do? They will have an aggregate, I mean, I mean, compulsion from the IoT objects. It will control its power such that there is an interference limit that to be experienced by the primary user. And secondary, I mean, IoT object will not exceed its power so that the interfering limits of the primary user will be affected. So that's called underlay mode. So if we see what are the party or players in this CRIoT system? Now, in CRIoT system, there are a primary user or a licensed user that is communications going on. IoT objects are the secondary users. It will find some spectrum, and whether the spectrum would be narrow band spectrum or whether it would be a wide band spectrum, that depends on the application. What IoT applications are going to serve? So it would be the spectrum sensing should be narrow band spectral sensing or it could be wide band spectral sensing and this narrow band spectral sensing there are different techniques but spectral sensing as a whole is nothing but a binary hypothesis means something present or not like when we send some radar signal to find a target presence or not in an image we find whether a pixel is an object pixel or a background pixel so this is kind of binary so here also that spectrum is currently being utilized by the say, uh, primary user or the licensed user or not that decision to be made by IoT objects. So this spectral sensing may be narrow band spectral sensing. This hypothesis can be real. like say for image processing, when we segment an image, we can make use different thresholding techniques by means of gray level, by means of texture, by means of uh, um, average, I mean, uh, information or age, something like that. Similar things here also, one can go resolving this binary hypothesis by calculating the energy of the primary user signal. So IoT object sends the signal of the primary user, calculate the energy and makes a binary decision. If the calculated energy is above a certain threshold, it means the primary user is present. Otherwise it is noise. So energy detection or in the next slides, it can be thought of like this, that spectral sensing is essentially a binary hypothesis. If primary user is not transmitting data, so a secondary or IoT object will only sense noise-like signal. But when there is primary user signal is transmitting, then there is noise and of course there is mobility and others, there is channel gain, channel fading. So this is the observations. And IoT object will operate on a frame basis. In this frame, it will first sense the primary user signal and makes a decision, spectral decision. If it is found that, uh, if it found that, finds that that primary user is not transmitting, so it will go on transmission. And if there are many IoT objects, they will allocate the, they will share the spectrum on time share basis. So this is the first IoT object share this transmission over this time and then over this time. So as I say, energy detection. Now question is, the how much information? Here is the cognition availability. What level of information an IoT object has about the primary user signal? If it is having no knowledge about the primary user signal, then energy detection is the very nice approach, blind approach. It will just sense the samples, calculate the energy, and make the decision. In my next slides, I like to show like this. So it is the primary user signal received at the IoT object receiver, square it, then it is integrated. If it is a digital signal, it will be summation. Then this energy is compared with respect to a threshold. This decision of threshold is an important issue and it makes a decision whether primary user is free or not. If this is a blind system, you need not have to, I mean, IoT object need not have to have any uh, information about the primary user signal. It does not need anything. But the, so that's very simple approach. But the challenge or the problem is, if we do not know about the primary user power, that's the, in terms of, communication signal processing or random signal, it is the covariance of the signal. And if we do not have the noise power, I mean the signal to noise ratio, there is uncertainty, then this system is very sensitive. So energy detection, simple, blind, it does not need the knowledge of the primary user, but it is uh, sensitive to the noise. On the other hand, I saw 
that there are other approaches for narrowband spectrum the match filter if you have or cyclostationary features if you have informed about if you have context aware situation about the primary user you are having some information about the primary signal then you can make use the match filter or cyclostationary features which are not that way sensitive to the uh, noise situation and others on the other hand when we look for a wideband applications iot objects needs application wide spectrum then there are approaches like uh, filter theory based approach fast fourier transform based approach wavelet based approach compress sensing based approach means you can uh, sense the spectrum from the least number of samples like with sub sample uh, i mean uh, sensing that means even if you have least number of samples it is very faster but computational expensive data expensive i mean uh, needs computations so this is basically the spectrum sensing related part i don't go for other there are relative advantages of match filtering and csf i'm not going to that part i just like to say the spectral sensing is basically a kind of resolving binary hypothesis whether the radio frequency channel is free or not right at this time and right at this geographic location when i am talking about spectrum issues it is spatial temporal temporal and it enormous huge amount of data information and large number of wireless nodes are there it's huge information and you will see it extensive data intensive applications and there later on we will see the scope of applications of machine learning algorithms so that's basically energy detection now the question comes as i time and again tell the needs of cr iot you might understand at this point as if i like to say there is scarcity of spectrum or there is demand of iot uh, networks to be connected or uh, iot objects to be connected and that is the spectrum and that's the issues and that's why we are looking for cognitive radio a cr mode of spectrum uh, access but i think the point will be more clear because not this only iot objects you think that it will not simple sense and data acquisition there are intelligent learning thinking decision making intelligent decision as i say so these all involve there are several operations of data incentive applications and this data needs to be stored in cloud so we need to have a connection and that's demands against the connectivity issues it's not like that that it collects data it connect with the peers but there will be huge amount of enormous large volume of data uh, analysis high dimensional data analysis non linear or least separable data and that's demands so this semantic analysis so that demands huge computation and this needs the data to be stored in cloud environment and they needs connectivity so what i like to say why is cognitive radio is important in iot implementation now there are large number of service oriented applications by uh, license spectrum different applications they for example government wants uh, medical services for say example 2.5 gigahertz band isn industrial scientific and medical applications so that bandwidth is allocated so different uh, services are there so primary user or license spectrums are fully clouded on the other hand different iot applications are coming in field promising and billions of wireless nodes in 5g expected to be connected how they will get connected among themselves so primary user spectrums are crowded huge amount of iot networks to be expected so there is really spectrum crunch and there is cognitive radio which intelligently provide the spectrum so bandwidth allocation to iot objects now one can think of spectrum leasing spectrum leasing is very costly you cannot lease spectrum because it is so costly you have to go for cr mode of application now if we go for cellular mode of communication the existing cellular mode of communication that is costly on the other hand if we go for bluetooth and zigbee these are distance limited low limited coverage so here is a standard is provided wireless radio access network ieee 802.22 that's the standard available for crn and that can provides low to i mean short to long range communications so this is other approaches as i already say that it can provide an interference free communication environment it will sense whether a primary user is transmitting or not and if it founds that primary user is absent it will transmit so this interference free transmission 
is provided by CR mode, cognitive radio mode. So CR based IoT provides interface free solution this. Now in future IoT, you can expect that there will be mobility as I already told. And when there is a mobility, your IoT objects will move from one location to another location. Whatever spectrum is available in this first location, the same spectrum may not be available in the second location because spectrum sharing is location oriented and time oriented at this time, at this locations. So with the mobility, when an IoT object move from one place to another place, we need, we could not expect that single communication carrier or single communication channel will meet this communication continuation, seamless connectivity. We have to switch from one place to another, switch one communication to another, uh, one communication channel to another, and that to be done in a seamless mode. And that's this requirement of cognitive radio. And again, if we think about the big data, huge amount, as I already say, that people will not bother the computation, the storage, where it will be stored. It seems huge amount of data it will handle and it will store into the uh, cloud environment. So big data, when it comes into the situations, we have to look for these connectivity issues. So this is the issue. Mobility is an important issue for future IoT. So where CR IoT is expected to provide seamless connectivity, big data, semantic derivation, cloud server, people would like to use objects without worried about its connectivity and storage. So this essentially creates huge volume of data and leads large storage and cloud space. So whole things, if we look for an IoT object's connectivity, the three gradual operations. First thing is it has to make spectral sensing. SS means spectral sensing, and it has to make decision. Once the spectral sensing is done, based on the knowledge of the spectrum, this, these channels are free at this time and all this, the different IoT objects will share among themselves the spectrum. Once these spectrums are shared, the important issue is the power allocation. Because in an open environment, several users are communicating. Unless you control the power, interference will be there. The spectrum will be polluted. Second more thing is nodes are, these IoT objects are battery driven mostly, and they have limited power. So unless you go for power control, you will not be able to go for long run of the battery and network lifetime. But at the same time, if your power is low, you cannot expect the reliable communication. So you have to have optimal power allocations. And that's the spectral sharing phase. And third one is the mobility, switching one frequency to another frequency. And there is security protocols, privacy techniques are coming. So spectral sensing, spectral sharing, and spectral management. So a CRIOT has to operate or ensure connectivity encompassing all this activity in related to the spectrum. Now comes, if we admit that CR will be a promising for IoT framework for implementation, then what are the design issues for CR IoT? So with this, I like to say that there is a need of cognitive radio concept for materializing the IoT framework to an extent. And if it is accepted, the issue comes, what are the design issues? The design issues, as I say, what applications we are going for IoT? Should it needs narrowband or wideband? So application things is one. What power is required? Second thing is what data rate is there? What is the signal nature of the transmission? Then enabling technology. That will determine by enabling technology. And of course, there are certificates. Certification means regulation, government regulation, because governments regulate certain frequency as license and unlicensed and certificate and all this. So the three important for design CR-based IoT is IoT applications. For example, if I consider IoT for medical applications, wireless medical applications, if we think for, there are different modality. Wireless medical telemetry services, MICS, I mean, medical implant communication services, ultra wideband services, wireless body area network, radar imaging, telehealth. So even in IoT based wireless medical applications, there are different kind of modalities are available. Let's say, for example, MICS, when I say medical implant communication services, it needs narrow bandwidth data transmission. Spectrums are 401 to 406 megahertz, six kilobits, I mean, 16 kilobits data transmission, and uh, three or six megahertz bandwidth is available, narrow band data transmission. On the other hand, if we look for wireless medical telemetry services, WMTS, 
bandwidth is a little larger, six megahertz, and your data transmission rate is larger. I mean, uh, 76 kbps. Coverage zone is larger, 100 meters. In MICS, it's the less than 10 meters or something like that. On the other hand, when we go for wireless body area network or ultra wide band, we will have enormous bandwidth. Data transmission rated 850 kbps. And technology is something different. We have to go for uh, CDMA technology or we have to go for, uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, OFDM like techniques. So this enabling technology, so factors are transmission range, how much coverage zone, whether it is few meters, 100 meters or something, what is the data rate, whether we are transmitting some kbps or megabits or large kbps data transmission, bandwidth, transmission signal nature and type. Signal type means whether it is an analog signal transmission or digital signal transmission because all we know digital signal has certain advantages and it's enormous bandwidth, I mean large bandwidth required compared to that of the analog transmission. And then whether it is an inter nature, nature means whether we need uh, continuous data transmission or intermittent nature of data transmission. So these are the factors. Uh, applications, whether it is a narrow band application or whether it is a wide band applications. Technology, whether it is a low range coverage or wide range coverage. Whether it is a uh, less data rate transmission or low data rate transmission or large data rate transmission. And of course, there are legal. So the typical application, as I say, wireless uh, medical application, there are existing technologies like MICS, medical implant communication services. As I say, it is a low frequency range, 41 to 460 megahertz. We can look for IoT. If anybody is looking for IoT medical uh, uh, applications, can look for this. But again, this bandwidth is 3 megahertz. As I already said, data rate is very less and coverage is 10 megahertz. On the other hand, so the transmission technology is frequency shifting techniques. On the other hand, if we look for wireless medical telemetry services, frequency range is 608 to 614 megahertz, or these are the megahertz, I mean, this range frequency can be used. And data rate is increased, 76 kbps. Coverage is also 100 meter. Bandwidth is 6 megahertz. On the other hand, we look for larger coverage regions. I mean, sorry, range is less, but uh, high data rate transmission. So 3 to 30 gigahertz like your, uh, sorry, 3 to 10 gigahertz, just below the milli uh, millimeter wave frequencies. Transmission type is code division or frequency hopping. Uh, sorry, here is frequency hopping. Here is multi-band orthogonal frequency division, multiple access, OFDM, and bandwidth is 500 megahertz. This is the 850 kilobytes and uh, range is this. So when you are going for large data rate transmission, coverage is going on reducing. And that is the need for cognitive radio network which can provide large range communication. I, IEEE 802.22 WRAN, you can go for multi-hop cognitive radio network. You see, when you look for wireless body area network, ultra wideband communication, it only covers two meter. That's the problem. If we look for large distance coverage, so we have to look. Now question comes that is there is no existing technology in uh, wireless medical application. Yes, this is all maybe in the process of uh, exploiting or in the process of exploration, but it needs, what, what we need? That the patients will be equipped with different medical devices. It will monitor the uh, patient's uh, different uh, physiological parameters like the temperature, uh, blood pressure, glucose level and all this. And the medical persons will remotely monitor all these physiological parameters and take the actions. Now the question comes, it needs ensuring the data transmission, seamless connection to be there, and larger coverage regions. That we need to explore here, and that's possibility. CR, the uh, cognitive radio wireless medical telemetry services. You can see that's 100 meter coverage range. So we can look for a multi-hop cognitive radio network for wireless medical telemetry services, which can provide larger distances. And by means of larger spectrum, if we can make available, we can go for high data retransmission. Now, as I say, uh, let us come to the role of CR in IoT application, cognitive radio in CR IoT application. Healthcare, I already says, this is needs smooth monitoring. These are already in existing uh, or in the process of implementation technology people are working for in different countries, this available for applications, exploring at least uh, cognitive radio WMPS 
uh, people uh, explore. But the question comes that connectivity, connection should be ensured, and that is why they are. Social activities like I say already, uh, IoT has explored different applications like say intelligent transport systems and roadside different uh, vehicles to be connected or devices to be connected for having the traffic information or we have to the uh, electronic tolling information. Now, there are existing technologies in USA and Europe. The 10 megahertz bandwidth is available for this uh, ITS, intelligent transportation systems, on 30 megahertz and 70 megahertz uh, band. 30 megahertz and 70 megahertz band, 10 megahertz bandwidth is available. But what is the problem? This is, uh, I mean, dedicated service, I mean, short range communication. Dedicated short range communication for intelligent transportation. But problem is what? The problem is it's only providing you the short range communications. This short range communication just you are having the alarming information, uh, traffic alarming or something like alarming information. This does not uh, provide the large volume of data transmission, which needs enormous uh, device to be connected and road, uh, and that's a costly affairs. Furthermore, the traffic management system in the uh, form of smart traffic lights can also be viewed example in the social domain. But again, we need to go for explorations of uh, many roadside units, long coverage zones, and which is cost, uh, costly affairs, and communication technology needs explorations. So this is the social activities. There are environment related applications. It is already in the process, IoT based application people are working for, for example, waste monitoring, and or uh, waste management, noise and temperature monitoring, uh, humidity, carbon dioxide emissions, all these needs, apart from the sensor, there should be uh, reliable and effective monitoring demands, installations of a large number of heterogeneous devices at different locations. And there needs an enormous data transmission for their intelligence. So what is essential in this kind of uh, environment-oriented applications, a large number of heterogeneous devices expected to be connected at different locations. And that needs information exchange. And we need to have cognitive radio IoT, uh, IoT applications. Now in in-home applications, as we know, as we say, that we can expect that smart feed, uh, freeze or smart light and all this. So this is already in the operations. It is expected uh, to make uh, everyday life of our works to be made, I mean, done by uh, means of some sensor or some devices to perform our everyday functions to improve our quality of services. Now. Uh, this kind of, as I say, smart feed and smart light, this Wi-Fi technology is there, uh, which is creating an inter. The, but the problem is what? That this Wi-Fi is creating um, this orthogonal frequency division, uh, this creating problem to the existing ISA band interference. So uh, it's adopt Wi-Fi technology in home application, smart feeds and smart lights. But the problem is it creates interference to the ISA band. So we have to make it free from this interference, we have to look for uh, CRIOT systems. Now, if we look for smart grid, it's a very crazy app, app, uh, things. We can, we, uh, there are smart grid. People are quite, uh, I mean, curious to have its energy consumption in any place of the world and in any time. Now, this needs huge amount of data, meter readings, large volume of data, they need to be transmitted. So what we can think of, the major drawbacks is the transfer of large volume of data from a large number of meter and devices in a limited spectrum bandwidth without interference to long distance communications. Now, you, we can think for a one like structure DSL or like cable structure, but it is again uh, costly affairs. If we go for cellular mode of communications, then also it is again uh, cost, costly affairs. So whether we go for wireless cellular mode of application or wired means by DSL or cable turns, the installation of cable or uh, spectrum, wireless spectrum is very uh, expensive. So we have to go for cognitive radio like concept. Smart cities, we can expect to have e-service to improve lifestyle in an eco-friendly manner. And that's because of the progress in the information and communication technologies. And we can look for continuous connectivity uh, that will ensure all this information and communication system to be in the backbone. 
So data gathering and user interaction is an important aspect and that needs the uh, CRBS IoT, needs the importance of the CRBS IoT. Now, uh, people are looking for less dependence on the human beings. So we can look for that there is a kind of internet of vehicles and which is having the module of communication control and embedded systems. So all these are possible provided we have to have the knowledge of the network conditions. So we have to have the knowledge about the network environment and that's the uh, essential for CRIoT system designs. So this is role of CR in different IoT applications and I like to highlight that why CR looks to be potential in all these diversified fields of IoT applications. Now with this, let us go for challenges in CR IoT. The, so if we just summarize all these things, we find that spectrum is an important issue. Power control in the data transmission is an important issue in order to uh, make transmission interference free and reliable. So protocol requires for CRIoT should have quality of service. What we call it low outage means the connectivity should not be break. Low outage like to means link connectivity or reliability of data transmission or rate of data transmission. Outage is a term we will come later what it's like to means that your data rate should not fall below a certain rate you have a certain prescribed data transmission rate you do not have below this rate if it below we call it outage and how many occasions it occurs that's characterized by outage probability and if we have multiple long distance coverage as i say for wide range of coverage you have to go for uh, criot applications and there are multiple links so if one link is failure, means the total connectivity problem will be there. So we have to consider individual link outages, and that is an important issue. As I already say, IoT objects has to do lots of jobs, and it is having less power, it is having less memory, it is having less processing capability, it is having less bandwidth. So IoT object has to work with less memory. Often power should be an issue, and when it is in power an issue, then you must have to have a kind of energy uh, i mean availability or energy supply such that network lifetime iot network would have extended lifetime and that is possible so so essential need for cr iot that iot objects should be uh, you have to consider the weight the size then power issue and there should be provision because as i say time and again that IoT objects often to be driven by <coughs> battery. And this battery has limited power. It has limited lifetime. So we have to have a provision of harvesting energy. And that is now meaningful because in environment, there are huge source of RF radio signal, radio frequency signal. And that radio frequency signal will charge the IoT objects because we are not in a position to go for uh, power line charging every time we are not in a position to replace battery frequently so we have to go for energy harvesting by means of rf energy or by means of other non renewables i mean uh, renewable so, i mean uh, re, uh, renewable sources like uh, solar or wind or others so uh, this is one and cognition ability is an important issue because a intruder may behave like an iot objects so there are different levels of security and from physical layer to transport layer, different layers of security we have to meet. And there is an issue, people are working with blockchain in connection with IoT, but it uh, needs also involvement of the other kind of uh, security aspect like your uh, cryptography, physical layer security, and media security in terms of secret sharing or data hiding or water marking and all this. So security is an important issue and energy harvesting is an important issue. And reliability in IoT network data transmission is an important issue. So erased in my analysis, I system design, I will uh, focus on this outage aspect. I will focus on the energy, how IoT nodes will harvest energy from the available RF signal and of course the security issues. The immediate I will talk about the energy harvesting issues. And as I already say, that there are enough sources of radio frequency in the environment. Cell phones are there, billions of cell phones are radiating uh, RF signals. Radio towers are there, Wi Fi uh, routers are there, laptops are there, TV signals are uh, uh, there. So there are enough sources of radio frequency. Why this radio frequency 
uh, or radio energy should not be used for harvesting signal. So what it is basically, you need RF energy to DC conversion because as, 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 uh, as all you know, when we put our charge, um, uh, mobiles or cell phone to the uh, um, uh, connector, we find that there is a charger, basically this charges. So basically it is nothing but RF or kind of AC to DC conversions and then power conditioning. So you have to have a scope or go for energy harvesting. Now, benefits as I already say, we are not in a position always to replace our battery. We are not in a position to um, <coughs> frequently recharge and we have to keep provisioning of energy harvesting. So this is the advantage of energy harvesting. Now with this, I'll come to the different communication models in IoT, although I will not be talking about all these. I will be focusing only the first one. The existing IoT communication model is device to device communication model, short range, low data rate communications, device to cloud communication model, that's IoT objects to be connected with cloud environment, device to gateway model, means IoT objects are connected with networks through the gateway. So this is another model and backend data sharing models. So these are the four existing communication models for IoT. Now, I will be talking in the perspective of system design, CRIoT system, D2D CRIoT model, focusing on energy efficient, means energy efficient system design, I like to means that there would be a provisioning of energy harvesting for IoT nodes or IoT devices, Internet of Things devices. And in the second model, I'll be talking about the security aspects that how in a typical application of unmanned aerial vehicle, industrial IoT application, how cognitive radio systems will provide the protection of eavesdropping through the friendly jamming. So security aspect will be the first system model, as I like to say, a typical, I'm not going in the details of our works. It's our uh, research go for work. And I just like to go for the system model like this. Let's say this is end user ENV. This is like your base station. And this is the user equipment. So this is the primary user. They are in the communication process. But their distance being much larger, they are not having line of sight communication. Means the base station and end user should not have direct communication paths. So here is an IoT networks and your IoT Internet of Things devices, IoT transmitter or one IoT object is connected with another IoT objects. And these IoT objects, they act as a relay for their communication. Means the primary user, this is the license user communications. Here, your base station is connected with end user and sharing data transmission by means of a license spectrum. But there is an obstacle or their distance being large, the base station and uh, user equipments, they do not have the direct access or direct link in that sense. So here, your IoT objects, apart from its own application, it's access a relay-like signal. And these IoT devices, in the context of uh, your primary user communication cooperation, it will act like a relay. Means it will just receive the signal of this both user. This is a two-way communication. Mean base station to end user and end user to base station. So this is a two-way communication. What is the frame structure? In the first frame structure, in the first CR, there is a medium access control protocol. What it says that this base station and end user transmit its data and IoT devices receive these signals, receive these signals. And in the second uh, uh, session or second time slot, after uh, taking this data, I mean of the user one and user two, end user one and base station and user equipments, it will superimpose its own data and send it. So I would, I would do one in the second time slot, transmit both this data and this data, which is retrieved in the first slot and along with its own data. So what would happen now when this user will receive this data and this data, so it will just go for interference cancellation and decode its own data. What would it would happen? Now this IoT D uh, internet of devices too, this is one way communication. This network, I mean, this IoT network communicate only from this direction to this direction. We have also worked for both way communication for IoT objects. But to have a simple system model, I like to say that base station and end user go for binary direction, bidirectional communication. 
and IoT networks acts as a relay. This may be a amplify forward relay or it may be a decode forward relay. What it receives, it just amplify and transmit. So IoT do uh, I, I, IoT, I mean IoT network device do what it receives earlier time this signal as well as this signal and now it is received this signal this signal plus its own signal so it will just cancel this interfering signal which it receives in the first slot and decode its own signal similar things happen that when it transmit this signal and this signal it is having its own data so in presence of this interference it will just cancel its own signal which is transmitted in the first slot to this and decode this signal similarly here it receives its signal as well as this signal and its own signal copy but it loads its own signal it cancels this one takes it as an interference and decode this signal so like this way this binary communication is done and now this is being a base station and this is being uh, end user equipment handle devices we assume that these are having the multiple antenna they equal to and my mimo gains is achieved now what it is does we assume that this is connected with power supply this is also having scope of connected with power supply so they will recharge battery but these iot devices are not uh, supposed to connect from device i mean charger and all this so they need to harvest energy from this communication so in the first time slot while there was a mac protocol these iot devices harvest energy as well as it produce information so that's why it is called swift protocol what this means simultaneous wireless information power transmission means it receives signals are used for energy harvesting as well as information processing right so this is simultaneous wireless information and power transmission protocol based d2d communication iot device communications so if we once again see the time frame in the first time slots there is energy harvesting as well as information transmission what is information transmission now this base station is transmitting to i2 devices and this is also transmitting its data with these devices by row and one minus row is what now whatever signal it received that i2 devices received from this and this a fraction row it is used for energy harvesting from the received signal it is harvesting energy it's something like you can think of trying some kind of fish from its own oil so something like this radio frequency signal it receives and a fraction of the received signal is used for harvest and remaining fraction it is used for information processing and in the next time slot iot device transmit data to this and this as well as this and i already say that it decodes their respective signal now as i say that this iot device may simple acts as intelligent i mean amplify and forward whatever it receives it just amplify and forward or it can do some intelligent operation it decodes and forward whatever it receives it decodes at some intelligence and forward so that's a kind of cognitive in intelligence and decision making so what we have studied in our approaches that we study the relative performance if this iot device is simple as a dumb device it amplify and forward or it is having some intelligent application like decode and forward what is the relative performance and then we see that decode and forward provide superior performance to that of the amplify forward mode of operations so what i'm going to see here is that system model consists of a pair of licensed cellular module uh, nodes located at the edge of a femtocell architecture heterogeneous network architecture these are equipped with multiple antenna iot devices are unlicensed user acts like a relay node and in return iot can assess the cellular spectrum to transmit the information to another device following the overlay spectrum sharing techniques why overlay because it is co cooperating this is the license spectrum iot device cooperates their transmission and in return they are sharing this mode is called overlay mode of overlay mode by means of cooperation it is having iot objects is having scope of sharing the spectrum by means of cooperation in license user transmissions later transmissions so this is basically the uh, relay nodes harvest energy following power shifting uh, splitting techniques simultaneous wireless information and power transfer we consider this as a relay fading i come to this uh, channel characteristics physical channel characteristics since there is no direct path so we consider it is a relay fading 
and this is having a direct path d2d -D communication line of sight and they are not going through the base station you see this iot devices likes to communicate with its pr but it does not go through base station so it direct having this so this is kind a model we consider nakagami threading this is the typical wireless communication channel model radio mobile channel so relay fading is considered and nakagami fading is considered for issue to this first phase mac protocol is used where uh, the base station and user equipment transmit data in second slot broadcast pu data superimposed own data so both these are and i say that the dh shows superior performance over a performance now the comes in the situation many situation there is security system i see there is a blockchain for iot security i am not going to that aspect generally by security when we talk about security data transmission people have no sense of cryptography and this works in the application layers in cryptography what do we know so let us first say in wireless systems being an op open channel wireless channel there is always possibility of eavesdropping means alice and bob is having the communication and there is an eavesdropper eve who receives this communication so it can eaves i mean eavesdropper can uh, eve can eavesdrop it's a passive eavesdropper it just listen but it can also be a jammer it can jam this communication it creates a high power and uh, disrupt this communication i'm not talking about the uh, uh, passive eavesdropping in the sense that it receives and it change the uh, cipher i mean uh, cipher text and transmit to the box i mean in cryptography there is key encryption key which is used for plain text to convert into cipher text and in the receiver i mean the bob use the key and decipher it so eavesdropping is one issue and jamming is another means disruption by power transmission it is disruption so there are an existing technology in cryptography but in cryptography there is an assumption you might be knowing what is that assumption that assumption is that eaves has low computational comp capacity or capability than bob this is an one assumption and knowledge of key is important issue so that seems to be but if we go for quantum computing this is vulnerable all these cryptographic techniques are seems to be vulnerable so cryptographic techniques has limitation in sense it is applied in the application layer lots of power consumption because when you go for deciphering management of key and deciphering you need to do lots of computational job and its power consumption is large and iot objects when do this it's really an issue and other assumption as i have already say that computational power is limited on the other hand those people are communication having background you know that in order to protect uh, in military com communication there was a time spec spectrum communication was developed cdma frequency hopping uh, time hopping systems are there there what we assume that that uh, third party do not know the spreading code in spread spectrum there is a spreading code is used the knowledge of this code pattern is not available to the third party friendly user knows it and this so limited knowledge about the spreading codes and it is again vulnerable to or node means if you have a high power on that spectrum you can jam this but it is in the physical layer now with this mobility with this wireless channel you can see in your wireless uh, node or in your mobile phone you are having a good signal you are having a bad signal you are under shadow zone you are in the faded zone you do not have a good signal quality in certain buildings you could not get even in your university campus it may happen it sometimes seen that in certain environment you could not have the good signal strength so the wireless channels are poor so it suggest that the god gifted this physical channel can we explore or exploit in security can we create a good channel for bob and create a bad channel because if we create a good channel signal to noise ratio would be larger and signal to noise ratio is bad if your signal to noise ratio is large your decoding will be large your probability of error will be large, uh, less and you will have the good quality on the other hand if your signal to noise ratio is small i mean low your decoding will be poor your large probability of error the message you will decode as a noise like so physical channel has attributes you may think that as if we are at the mercy of god at the mercy of nature to create good channel and bad channel yes this is possible by means of signal processing 
by in future 5G communication, you will see there are beam forming concept. There are signal processing, there are MIMO technology coming in the multiple antenna. Your handheld devices will equip with multiple antenna and that is possible. So what I'm going to say, information theoretic security. Prior to that, I need to say, when I go for cryptography, you always uh, talk about the security by means of the computational complexity to break the, or to know about the uh, key. But you do not quantify that this amount of information was transmitted. How much information is secure in data transmission? Information is a measurable quantity. You always represent in terms of bits, bytes, gigabits, megabits, or something like that. Data rates, you are specified by means of uh, bit rates, all these. So BPS, KBPS, megabits per second. So information is a measurable quantity. But in cryptography, you cannot quantify the amount of information is securely transmitted. Here is the possibility that information theoretic security and that to be achieved at the physical layer by means of signaling techniques, by means of modulation techniques, by means of power allocation, you can create a good channel, you can create a bad channel. You do not have to rely on that if such limited knowledge about the code pattern or if such limited knowledge about the computational power. You can't uh, quantify your communication that this many data, this volume of data transmission was there and this volume of data is securely transmitted and this is not. So breakable, unbreakable, probable and quantifiable. Implementation by means of signal processing, communication and coding. I like to see here is that I'm not telling that we do not need cryptography and all this, but we have to ensure security in all level. The cognition ability in IoT objects adds security in levels. We have to ensure security in different levels of network, business to service provider and also to the application. Application demands different types of security. Business provided to service provided to uh, customers needs different security. And we have to look combining all these multi-dimensional, multi-faceted and costly security approach. So what I'm going to say by using multiple antenna, you can create a good or bad like channel. And here is Alice and here is Bob. You can create a good channel condition. You can create a bad channel conditions. You can take multiple antenna benefits. You can take the directed signal, the signal to be directed in a particular direction. And in there will be a null when you go for antenna radiation pattern. You create a null in other all direction such that this Eve will have the poor quality signals and Bob will have a good quality signals. What are the benefits? Now it involves, I already say, Upper layer cryptography techniques consume huge computational power, energy consumption, computational complexity. To avoid cryptographic key management, information theory security. What this security like to means mathematically? We have a good channel, we have a bad channel. What is the security? Now, we will have good data transmission, we will have bad data transmission. So if the difference between data transmission rate of main channel and eavesdropper channel, this in my words, the difference between the data transmission in main channel and the eavesdropper channel, if this difference is above a certain limit, if this value is positive, I ensure that Bob data transmission is secure with respect to the eavesdropping. If this data rate is below, I mean negative, security fails. So we have to create a good channel and so that the data rate in this channel is large compared to the data rate in this channel. So my main idea is to explore wireless channel characteristics to secure wireless transmission in presence of eavesdropper. What? The secrecy outage. Outage, as I say, if the difference of this data transmission rate below a certain limit, then secrecy fails. That's the outage in secrecy. So secrecy outage will occur if the channel capacity of the main link, link of the legitimate PR, falls below that of the wiretap links. So that's the channel capacity. Mathematically, if I like to define secrecy capacity is what? The secrecy capacity can be defined as the difference of channel capacity in main link and in the eavesdropper link. And if this is positive, security is there. Now, if this difference, if this secrecy capacity is above a certain limit, then there is no outage. Outage will occur if this capacity below a certain rate. And if this is below a certain rate, how many times it occurs? That's your outage, secrecy outage. So secrecy outage probability means if the secrecy capacity falls below the target rate, that's the quantification of the security. 
which is not made in the cryptographic techniques. And this is the coming days technology. People are exploring and working on physical layer security, surveillance, and many other applications. This is the technology that could be used. I never say that, of course, cryptography to be coupled with this, to provide or to tighten the security in more. Now I will be talking about. Now, so this is what is stopping. Now, what we will do? There will be a jammer, friendly jammer, who will jam the eavesdropping signal. So jammer, as I say, that which will disrupt the communication. Now I take help of the jammer, friendly jammer. So an IoT objects, that secondary user transmitter is transmitting data to the receiver. And there are multiple jammers. This no, they are friendly jammer. Their data transmission knowledge is available to here. So in the first time slot, it transmit data, it also transmit data. So secondary user has, or IoT object, IoT receiver has knowledge of its own data transmission, receive data, and this data. Now, what would happen? As this data is available to it, it will discard it and decode this. On the other hand, the eavesdropper is having two copies of the data. The secondary, I mean, IoT objects data and JMR data. It is totally unknown. This is unknown and this is also unknown. As it is friendly to this system, this knowledge is available to this. So it can discard this inf interference and find this decoding. Whereas this is unknown and this is also unknown. So this if stopper will be, if, I mean, confused about the message and it will not be decoded. And now you have multiple if stopper, different channel will be there. Whoever will create best interference signal, a jammer will be selected who will create a best interference signals and to be jammed. So this is basically jamming used in countermeasuring of eavesdropping. Now I will come to a system, a typical cognitive radio environment, unmanned aerial vehicle system based industrial IoT. Before going to this cognitive radio IoT system, let us see, see about these techniques. What did it say? Let's say there is a factory one and factory B. They are having the common business interest. They are having the common business interest. Factory A employ an IoT industrial application. Their business data they share among themselves by means of these IoT networks. Now, for this communication, they need say communication band. What they are doing? They are sharing the license user spectrum opportunistically. So they will sense the spectrum and transmit. Now, this factory is eavesdropping and this factory is disrupting this communication in the spectra. So it has two roles. The factory two first do disruption of this communication. What it does, it behaves like a primary user emulation attack. Means it's behave like a primary user signal such that when the IoT objects of the factory one sends the spectrum information, it will be misled. Means some agent of this factory behave like say license user creates a license user like signal so that the IOT objects when the sense the spectrum, even if this primary user is not communicating because of this signal presence, it will be misled and it will not communicate. It will not utilize the spectrum. Now it's intelligence sensing techniques. It defeats it, this detrimental signal. Then the second countering second situation is what I'm telling, going to say that it's sensing is intelligent even in presence of this signal, it correctly find that spectrum is present. It will communicate among themselves like a different IoT object transmit their respective signal, I, I mean respective of, uh, receiver objects. Now, factory B deputes an eavesdropper. It just gets information of the basic signal. Now, all these IoT objects, as I say, they are energy limited. They will also harvest energy. So what these IoT objects are doing, it is harvesting energy from this registering RF signal. It is sensing the primary user spectrum based on the spectrum information. If it founds that the primary user is not transmitting, even in this detrimental presence of the agent of this, it will share their data. And assume that the shared data to be eavesdropped by the agent of the factory B. So it will create a jammer. It will take help of a jammer. This jammer will jam this signal and if stop. Now jammer knowledge is available to this. So it will cancel the interfering effect. On the other end, jamming will be. It's a typical inter, uh, 
unmanned aerial vehicle based industrial iot application so what we are doing here there is a primary user primary user transmitting data to the primary receiver these secondary users are sensing and they are collaborating their sensing information to a fusion center fusion center upon receiving the sensing information they make a broad, global decision because this time there is a primary user is there it misleads individual sensing information it intuit it behaves like a primary user and it a intuiter of the factory b and it lists the sensing information so they makes a collaborative spectral sensing individual sensing information from there it does not make any decision it's 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 uh, sends to the fusion center and fusion center makes a global information of the spectrum and then it share this information to the fusion uh, to all broadcast all and they based on that that if this is not transmitting they will transmit and they will assume on share mode on time share mode they also assume that that there are if stopper and they will take the jamming signal for protecting their data transmission from the if stopping the model is something like that as i say in the clear that this is the direct signal this is the interfering signal this is the direct signal this is the interfering signal to the so they will need to go for power control such that they will not be affected so interference will not be affected and this if stopping to be protected so what we have done in our system this is our very recent work which is accepted in itp transaction on mobile computing and there we mention this typical uav industrial iot application if anybody of you are interested you can go to this you can get this uh, the application and this perspective uh, theoretical works what we have done here that we have a pair of iot objects and this iot objects throughput we are calculating and some of the throughput to be maximized our whole objective is the sum of this data transmission should be maximized in a constant environment what is the environment that the agent of the second factory b will defeat this sensing information so certain sensing reliability to be met there will be the energy harvesting that all these nodes iot nodes will harvest or power to be powered there is no external power these iot objects are not powered by external sources all the transmit data from the power harvested from this pu signal or pu like signal this rf energy they purposefully use this agent signal as source of energy harvesting and this signal also as energy harvesting that a provisioning of green iot like signal so some throughput will be maximized reliability of the primary primary will be protected energy causality means by energy causality like to means all iot objects will harvest or huge power from the harvested energy there is no provisioning of the external power uh, charging there would be jammer to protect from if stopping there will be a certain data transmission to be provided means the link quality or data transmission link must be uh, maintain a certain rate that secrecy uh, sorry that is the outage secondary outage means uh, data transmission rate must satisfy a certain rate and it will be protected from secrecy outage by means of secrecy outage so this is our mathematical and time frame structure is what in the first time slot it will sense spectral sense and energy harvest by means of swift enable techniques power sharing mode as i say in our previous work so in the first time slot it makes simultaneous spectral sensing and energy harvesting then sensing information it transmit to the fusion center by reporting slot by amplifying and then based on the decision the primary user this hypothesis like to means primary user is not transmitting so individual secondary transmitter uh, node receiver node or iot objects are transmitting data if primary user is found to be present then these nodes harvest energy from this signal because primary is transmitting so there is no provisioning of iot objects to data transmission it will harvest energy from this signal so based on these two condition this is there so this is now as i already say that there are cognition ability in iot objects so we need to add intelligence flavor so there are load balancing is an important issue channel quality indication is another important issue what is the good channel or bad channel because channel condition is essential for reliable data transmission and power control is an important issue in channel data transmission which is again an important issue quality of service consideration is another important issue so the challenges in cr iot is the channel conditions network conditions what is the channel what are the frequency available you have to have a database of the spectrum you have to prediction of the spectrum you have to have channel quality good channel or bad channel what power we will have to use such that certain data rate to be maintained iot quality of service to be maintained 
because if you look for iot medical telemetry services by means of cr you must not exploit the quality because you have to have a good quality physiological signal of the patient otherwise detection will be fault so this qs consideration already say that our iot objects should have low weight small size so low power constant lightweight cr iot where iot objects should have cognition ability to make smart decisions of the spectrum and perform intelligent operation by intelligent uh, operation of analyzing network condition apart from that the radio mobile if we go for a multi hop communication channel multi hop link you have to have individual link quality and this channel is very complex in nature unpredictable so we can explore machine intelligence for semantic analysis of the data supervised and supervised or reinforcement learning we have to have supervised or clustering in spectral sensing and multiple route multi hop routing i will come why that multi uh, the spectral sensing machine learning based approaches of spectral sensing is found to be effective than classical based approaches because in machine learning based approaches you have good study of the radio environment you can make your decision region optimal so there are two benefits the machine learning approaches uh, uh, study uh, um, radio environment in a better way and the decision about primary user is present or not it can be optimally done radio environment map to be done what is the coverage zone it can be done by means of machine learning approaches so i will conclude and we go for discussion if you have any queries or uh, questions cr iot issues challenges and future research now the success of the failures of cr iot systems lies on the good hardware design the important issue is the switching of one frequency to another frequency when iot objects have mobility and for seamless connection you have this now antenna good antenna antenna has a, antenna size has related with the frequency that is used so cr antenna in one frequency must not be capable or uh, in other frequency say cellular frequency whatever it operates the same antenna cannot be operated in i segment so we have to look for an antenna design which to be tuned to the multiple frequency and multiband so multi user and multiband communication as i already say the radio channel condition is an important issue for reliable data transmission power control is an important issue because you have to look for the network lifetime iot objects lifetime so you will be looking for low power system design but low power will again going against the reliability of the data transmission and if your channel is not good quality so you have to have a accurate channel state information in wireless communication channel state information is a research issue and outdated channel information is an issue for power control and other so you have to have a updated channel information and there is machine learning which we you can learn from the data about the radio channel gateway this is an important part as i say that gateway connects different iot objects to the network now the individual iot objects has to do the spectral sensing now this is again consuming uh, time consuming and energy consuming iot node may not have that energy for going for uh, spectral and gateway has to do on behalf of this iot so this is basically an important issue so gateway has to has the flexibility scalability security and energy efficiency furthermore if the spectral sensing job has to be done by gateway this is again adds to the burden so efficient resource utilization and it is to be done other important issues as i said data semantic data analysis because large volume of data to be there in many situations say for wireless medical telemetry services or other cases like uh, patients uh, past history medical history to be analyzed and uh, as i already say that high dimensional data there is in different typical cr iot as a typical iot application large volume of data or high volume of data and non linear and uh, data so i mean non linear is separable data so this is difficult for uh, processing i mean decision making once again it is decision make i mean processing so you have to have uh, different type of i mean faster algorithms for uh, or intelligent algorithm for data analysis so dll machine learning is spectral sensing and prediction as i already say radio environment mapping semantic data analysis and spectrum related functions this is another important issue is standardization different uh regulatory bodies are working for standardization of the iot networks at the same time of the cr iot but it's the time for looking for the standardization of the cr iot as i already say networking and addressing 
we have to understand the network situation, network environment, uh, environment, and then address it. And of course, the security and privacy issues. And every layers of the networks we had to provide. We have to look for a synergistic integrations of different ne network. I mean, security technologies like cryptography, blockchain, data hiding, secret sharing, physical security, and all this. So these are all challenges, and these are all issues one has to take care. Particularly the semantic data analysis. As I say, it is very important uh, aspects because uh, cloud is an important aspect coming into the situation in future. The fog computing and cloud people are, uh, I mean, looking for everything as a service in the coming days situation. So uh, model based sharing of resource to cloud. And if you go for uh, cloud computing, there are three major service models like say infrastructure is as a service platform as a service and software as a service. And all these enormous kind of data analysis or data handling needs sharing of this data to the cloud uh, and that needs the connectivity. So that's the essence of CR IoT and there it needs synergistic integrations of different cutting edge technologies like machine learning, blockchain technology and others. So with this, I uh, stop my uh, presentation. Uh, there are Minute, couple of minutes time left. So if you have any question, you can uh, please ask me. I would be happy to answer if you can, or interact rather. If not answer, I can interact you. Some of these references uh, which I used, and this is. So uh, if there is any question and answer, uh, I'll be happy to share it. Yeah, that's okay. Say, uh, slide will be shared, no problem. Uh, do you have any question or anything related, any issues? Any issues I would be happy to share. Uh, I mean, yeah. Any question from anybody? Hello. Sir, good morning, sir. Oh. Sir, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Sir, uh, I am uh, Dr. R. Muthukumar from National Engineering College, Tamil Nadu, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I, yes have, I have completed my PhD in the area of uh, cognitive radio network. Yes. How you link with uh, other network with uh, IoT, sir? Any simulation specialization software is there for uh, implementing uh, cognitive radio other network with uh, uh, IoT, sir? Uh, see, uh, for, as far as our research uh, or cognitive radio or this uh, typical application of IoT in uh, industrial, this I say we, I mean, our students uh, simulation does in the MATLAB platform. So we do our own coding in the MATLAB platform. Uh, okay. We do our system model and uh, optimization or analysis and all this we do it and we run it in a matlab environment and as far as the ad hoc network is considered if you go for the application specific uh, say for example cognitive radio vehicular ad hoc network uh, people are using for intelligent transport systems uh, mm. there are application and there are uh, people work this uh, uh, i mean cognitive radio vehicular ad hoc network cr vehicular ad hoc networks and uh, mostly uh, depending on the what purpose you like to serve in what aspects you like to address say uh, for example ad hoc network like say uh, security is an important issue in the framework of say multiple vehicles and vehicles uh, leave from one place to another so a vehicle uh, diver may mislead the frequency information to the other divers on behalf of that so uh, that may be an issue and uh, energy may be an issue uh, like that. So uh, generally, there are scope of cognitive radio ad hoc network in the framework of vehicular network uh, and uh, and uh, intelligent intelligent. Okay, sir. So uh, I have implemented some uh, simulation uh, using uh, yeah, Puja. In, 
to just yes, simulator yes. for IoT. Yes, yes. So whether it is possible to implement uh, uh, Agnet Radio in Puja, yes. sir? definitely definitely you because if you develop your system model and you can code and then that, that can be definitely implemented that can be okay definitely. okay thank you sir thank you for your information any other point from anybody any comment i think uh, it seems to be uh, uh, Boring. People, people are not having any question or interaction. Uh, maybe it seems. Uh, I mean, uh, not. Uh, excuse me, sir. There is a. Uh, there is a question. Ah, on spectrum the... pooling. Yeah. Yeah, yes, uh, yes, pooling. yes. Yes. By means of spectrum pooling, actually, what is uh, like to say in that sense? It is the radio frequency spectral environment situation. That spectra, you, you are having certain cycle, the radio frequency spectrum cycle, like spectral sensing, then spectral decision, spectral management, and spectral sharing. So it might have that your application, uh, certain times it needs some bandwidth. Suppose in a certain IoT applications, your data transmission rate is not supposed to be fixed. You have to go for uh, different data rate transmission and different phases of transmission. So your bandwidth requirement may not be same you may have to go for different adaptive bandwidth so, so you may have to go for pooling means like say for example if you go for multi-channel communication environment like say orthogonal frequency division multiple access uh, in such cases the channels uh, you can consider and go for uh, i mean coupling such that your target data rate to be maintained what i'm going to say that even if certain spec spectrum is available but that particular frequency channel may not be equipped with the CR applications or IoT application by means of CR technology you like to go. So you have to look for a kind of channel, a pool of channel to be selected such that your target rate or your application to be made. So you have to uh, look for a set of channels uh, out of the radio frequency spectrums available in order to make and for an efficient means so that uh, different users can be accommodated. So that's basically a kind of uh, spectrum pooling. So, I mean, out of this spectrum pool, you have to intelligently select so that because switching, so, uh, switching from one spectrum to another spectrum, one channel to another channel is a very important issue because it is again energy consumption. You are transmitting. And in next time slot, if you have found that this spectrum is not available and you have to switch to another frequency, this is energy consumption. Energy consumption. So you might have to have a prediction ability such that uh, during the process of your communication, you could expect certain frequency to be available. And if you can apply your learning based approach, uh, the availability of the spectrum by means of prediction based techniques and select the spectrum channel, uh, that's uh, the benefits of the spectrum pooling. Uh, spectrum uh, pooling. Okay. Any 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 other points or anybody, particularly the medical uh, applications? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, sir. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Yeah, uh, sir. I have a question that uh, in application area you have mentioned about the uh, smart grid. Uh, means yes. uh, the role of CR in IoT applications. Sir, can you enlighten us yeah, about this? Uh, the smart grid. How it's applied for the smart grid? Uh, the CR. Yes, 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 that's a good point. Actually, what is happened, you might be see energy consumption as a customer, you always you will be always interesting or interested to know your energy consumption. See, nowadays you see that energy you have, uh, I mean, complain against the energy, I mean, the power supplier uh, when you see the bill. So, at the end of the month, you must be looking for, I mean, uh, people will be looking for uh, that uh, energy consumption. Uh, I mean, uh, consumer wants to know anything and any time and any place related to their energy consumption. The question is, how this to be accomplished? This needs IoT smart grid in future. The major challenge is that transfer of large volume of data from a number of meters 
our devices in a limited spectrum bandwidth because large number of meters are connected and you can get your energy consumption information from anywhere in at any time so it's essentially a large volume of data transmission needs and that large volume of data comes from the large number of meters and devices and that to be transmitted over a limited bandwidth now if we look for the current technology of dsl or fiber based approaches if you like to do you have to uh, go for fiber um, i mean cost because fiber uh, cabling is again cost effective i mean uh, costly purchase installation of cable or fiber is huge expenses if you go for the wireless transmission cellular this can overlap but again cellular phone is very i mean crowded you if you go for leech of cellular spectrum that's again also costly so you would be looking for crb side so what i'm going to say in smart grid applications that different worldwide scattered meters and energy devices they will share their meter readings meter readings and that to be done by means of and huge amount of calculation involvement so that's visible that to be done by means of cr so again your meters when exchange data it will have certain ability of intelligency about the which spectrum is available right at the location and that spectrum to be used understand so you will access your energy consumption consumption from the meter readings and that to be shared data transmission is essential and that data transmission needs bandwidth or frequency available is it okay yes sir thank you sir sir how about uh, interoperability with uh, crn uh, in uh, in what uh, in what sense you are like to say interoperability you tell me i mean iot uh, iot devices uh, interoperability say for example as i say a typical cooperative environment in my first work of iot and all this you can see that iot network network is not a dedicated network there iot network is sharing it is not doing see what is what is uh, say for example in my first uh, if i go to the slide you will see uh, in my first applications system design we do not go for spectral sensing see iot device do not go for spectral sensing because spectral sensing iot objects need to sense the spectrum information it needs energy it consumes time if you see my uh, second system model there is a slot for energy harvesting and sensing so this time slot but if it was not used i mean if this slot was not there it could transmit data so it depends on what systems or what situation iot systems are working with if iot systems are working in cr mode as an overlay mode here it is an overlay mode meaning that iot devices need not have to do whether primary is there or not iot is fully aware of the primary rather iot is receiving primary user signals getting primary user signals and in the second time slot it transmitted own data to the second one its respectively along with the data of this one so here it operates in the overlay mode of information on the other hand if you see here in the next system model for industrial iot uh, i mean unmanned aerial vehicles you do not have the knowledge whether primary is transmitting at this time or not so you need to first go for a sensing of the primary user and you are making decision whether this condition or this condition and your action plans is depends on whether this primary user transmitting or not if it is not transmitting primary is not transmitting means hypothesis zero then iot objects are transmitting if hypothesis is one iot objects is no way of data transmission right at this time it will harvest rather harvest it will charge its battery from this so based on the mode of operation iot applications what kind of mode of operation should it be now you may put the question that if this situation is there then how it will transmit suppose iot objects has to data transmit but it finds that it is transmitting this i mean primary is transmitting what it can do it can go for underlay mode of communication it can control its power 
it can go for adaptive transmission by low data rate and control its power without affecting the primary user. Means simultaneously primary user is also transmitting and secondary, I mean IoT is also transmitting. So it depends on the radio environment, particular application it demands, what the quality of services to be made. And that way it plays the decision whether it will act, IoT objects will operate CR in the mode of overlay or in the mode of underlay or in the mode of interview. That's it will decide. That's the interview. Okay, sir, thank you. Any other question or any point? Any comments? Please feel free if you have any other comments in other way. Because when we people also do like such any comments which we do not consider, which we say it is other way, but if your opinion say on the practical perspective or, or other way, uh, logically it's something different. I would be happy if anybody of you can see up. Any such opinion in the context of uh, CR or, or anything like that. If you have any any negative comments or any points, I'm not saying neg I mean, in other points, uh, in the context of uh, implementation or issues, challenges, maybe the issues of technical or maybe the legal issues, I would be happy if you have other kind of opinion. So that may be any other way issue to explore us uh, to think about the points. I hope you can get, I, I like to say, I mean, in CRIOT or some application, which I say, if you have any kind of other opinion uh, in the point of view of issues, technical or legal issues or something, uh, or secure, uh, I mean, other challenging issues or implementation perspective, you can share. Any So it's okay. It's okay. I think just see. Uh, definitely, sir. I, I I don't think there is any further questions from. Yeah, anyone. definitely. Uh, you uh, continue, and uh, it is the, for the information of the participant that next uh, lecture uh, we are having on this Kusa simulator. In, uh, someone was uh, asking question uh, from uh, discussing about Kusa simulator. So next session we have. Yeah, yeah. So. That's so yeah, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, for uh, sharing your knowledge and experience on the implementation of uh, cognitive.